Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Hunter Tune. Today we're going to be working on this EK sedan with a GSR engine swap and a Rev9 turbo kit. So this is a pretty basic, simple uh, setup. Uh, this Rev9 kit I've installed on a couple cars now and they all seem to fit fairly well. Most of the eBay kits that you buy, uh, at least back in the day when I bought a lot of eBay kits, uh, the downpipes would never fit. Uh, the, just the piping you'd have to make different and it was just a kind of a, a crapshoot on if you bought the right eBay kit or not. So now I think some of these eBay sellers like Rev9, CX Racing and a few others, uh, they're actually getting the fitment a lot better uh, because most of the stuff worked good but like I said now it seems as if they're actually measuring and making parts the right way. or making them better than they were, I should say. So this car has, I don't know, 50-ish trim, basic run-of-the-mill T3 turbo, five bolt downpipe to a two and a half inch uh, exhaust. It's just open downpipe right after the motor, not hooked up to the rest of the exhaust. He said that he wants to leave it open downpipe for now and hook the exhaust up later if he gets sick of the noise. So I think he said that these wastegates come pre-installed with like five, six pound spring. So hopefully that'll work. I did have to remove one of the plugs on the wastegate because there was no vent on the top of the wastegate. So this was plugged and this was plugged. So uh, just like I was explaining in one of the last videos, if you have no room for the air to escape out, it, the wastegate can't open. And then it re results in overboost which could result in a rod poking out of the motor, which we don't want. Uh, so I installed a set of RC550s in this car for him and just kind of looking everything over, probably pull the plugs out here, check what plugs and gap are in this thing. And then uh, the only causes for concern that I see, this thing's put together pretty good, uh, but there is a few little things like the blow off valve is like loose. I don't know why that is, if this needs to be welded or not. I'm hoping it doesn't leak and we don't have issues. And then the intake air temp sensor, he also just kind of like RTV'd into the pipe. So I'm hoping that's gonna hold. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, worst case scenario, uh, if guys jam sensors into pipes like that, I always recommend using JB Weld, uh, just because the JB Weld is going to hold the boost. RTV can blow out. So we'll see if it holds. If it holds, great. If it doesn't, we'll mix up some JB quick and fix that leak. So I did end up chipping a P28 for him and installing a jumper harness. This car was running an OBD2A P72 computer before it was turbocharged. So I have uh, his old injectors here and his old ECU. He supplied the jumper harness, I supplied the ECU chipping and tuning and the install the injectors. So that's what we're doing on this one. Uh, like I said, got the chip P28 ready to go. I have a base map in it for these RC550s and it runs pretty good, uh, but it was a single cam map to start. So what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to add fuel into this tune in order for it to be like a close base map. And I'm going to do that right now after I check and inspect the spark plugs. And then we'll get right to it and we'll start doing some pulls, monitoring uh, to see how much boost this thing's going to make. I'm going to start off with a really rich base map and we're going to make sure that the boost uh, makes what we want it to make and doesn't make too much. So, and we're going to make sure it makes any boost with those two concerns I was talking about. So hopefully, a, it makes boost, and B, it uh, everything works. So we're gonna start there, and I'll let you guys know in a second uh, how the plugs are, and uh, once we get a map in this thing, and the dyno all set up. All right, so I just got back from the parts store to grab some plugs, I ran out, uh, but the car had these BKR6s in it. So, we, got, we went with a seven on this car. Could probably even do a eight heat range. And I got a base map in it out of another car that I did uh, with 550s and a stock map sensor. So, got the timing all set up. 
got uh, the base map in the car and uh, you can hear it idling right now. It's a little poppy. Like it tut 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 like it's a little lean. So going here. You can see the wide band is reading like 16, 17. So we're gonna have to add some fuel in at idle. And uh, we're gonna see where else we need to add fuel. So I'm gonna just drive it on the dyno a little bit and do some driving to kind of see what all needs adjustment and we'll go from there. Currently cruising is in like the 13s air fuel idle is lean and uh, Getting into boost before VTEC was like 11 8 11 9 12 0 and then when it crossed into VTEC it went like 10 10 10 20 So we definitely need to pull some fuel out of VTEC and on the boost gauge inside It looks like we made like seven eight pounds And we made 260 horsepower so not a bad start. Uh, we're gonna improve on this, I'm sure, once we get some fuel out of it. So this is what our curve looks like so far, and we're gonna try to make this even better. So I'm gonna pull some fuel out of the VTEC side. I'm going to add some in. I'm gonna add some in on idle. So on the VTEC side, I told you guys I was gonna start rich. Uh, I'm just going to overall take out fuel here, probably 10%. And then idle, we're also going to fatten up these areas in here. So we're going to give that like another 10%. Uh, cruising areas, so like probably here to here-ish was like in the 13s. So we could probably pull out a little bit here. I'm only going to pull five for now. Uh, down here was good, light throttle, cruising was fine. We could probably stab in like a couple percent of fuel in boost up here uh, just to kind of keep it a little richer coming into boost. Uh, timing is very conservative on the non VTEC side. I mean, 16 degrees, 12 degrees, uh, very very conservative non VTEC side. So I may end up adding some timing in here after we get the fuel figured out. Uh, non, or, uh, the VTEC side, we are running like 20 degrees at seven pounds. So good start uh, right now. I'm gonna save this file I just adjusted and we're gonna burn it to the chip and we're gonna do another run. Uh, maybe I'll show you guys what the air fuel is gonna look like now after adjusting this stuff and I'm happy that the wastegate seems to be opening uh, we didn't run more than 10 pounds of boost which is kind of where I would want to shut this thing off I wouldn't want to really run more than 10 pounds on pump gas with this turbo kit uh, I have made closer to 400 on these kits on E85 um, but on built motors and stuff stock engine restricted you know kind of cheaper turbo kit you kind of get what you get.
So that time, uh, VTech was 1050, 1080, and then way up top it got rich again. So I'll have to pull some more, probably above like seven grand. I actually spun it up a little higher that run. Uh, before VTech in boost was like 11.0, 11.20, something like that. And you can see we did pick up power pretty much everywhere. Um, the crossover might need to be a little lower. It seems like VTech's a little high right now, so I might lower VTech down. Uh, but you can definitely tell in this area here where we picked up power just from that fuel change. So obviously the, the higher number is the recent run. I spun it up higher too. Uh, you can see we picked up some power, you know, in the 6,000 RPM, 5,500 range. Before we were at 235 at 5,800, 5,900, and now we're at 247. So I mean, we picked up 10 wheel from 10% fuel change uh, down there. Uh, I think, like I said, this stuff is still fat. So I'm gonna have to lean this area out above 6,500 or so because it was in the tens air fuel, but we made 302 horsepower. Um, and it looks like on the gauge in the car, it makes like nine pounds. It's like right under 10. So my logger is not working for chip DCUs right now. So I can't see what the map sensor sees, but I do have the cut set at 10. So if it does hit 10, it's gonna cut the engine. Um, but so far so good guys. I might splash some uh, timing in it down low before VTEC and see if that changes anything. And I'm also gonna change the VTEC crossover down, I think it's at five grand right now. I'm gonna try it at like 4,500. And then I'm also going to pull the fuel above 6,500. I'm gonna pull out another like 10% probably, five, 10%. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, round three. Let's see what she does now. VTEC's a little lower. Idle's looking great. fuel out up top above like 6500 and you saw it was perfect above 65 it was in the 11s uh, but before 65 is rich so I'll probably pull another couple percent out of that mid-range there and we'll see what the VTEC crossover did if it helped it or not really good smooth running GSR though very quiet See what she did. So we made more overall power up top, but we did lose in here in the mid range. Let me try to zoom out here, compare just the last two runs. So in the middle there, you can see where I said it, it got rich. And then the fuel came back out of it and it was in the 11s and we were on track where we need to be. So I'm gonna try to get this back where it was or above, hopefully. And also the VTEC crossover really didn't do much. Uh, it might've even lost some power. So we might need to have VTEC a little higher on this setup. We should be all dialed on this pull, I think. I think she's gonna be pretty happy now. I added even more fuel to idle, so we'll see if that comes around. It 
it was like low 15s I had it another 5% but sometimes these injectors they want to you know when they're at low duty cycles they need more percent of fuel to get what you want when the injectors in a in its range of use uh, you don't have to add or pull as much I don't know if that makes any sense but start the log the whole time right when I stabbed it it was like 12 volt and it hung like 1130 the whole pull 1130 1150 that was awesome I might have to splash a little bit more back in cruising because I pulled some out trying to get it to run a little bit leaner cruising but I think I'm going to end up keeping it a little rich so we don't run into any misfires at cruise that's gonna be our record for the day, I guarantee it. That's gonna make the most power, I bet, everywhere. We'll find out. 318, and a lot smoother curve. Let's see here, comparing some runs. So this is the last run that we did. Pretty much overlaid. Um, I think a lot of the loss in power that we're seeing now in the mid-range is just because I've been doing back-to-back -back runs on the thing. So um, maybe we'll do a run later or uh after it cools off and we'll see how much power it makes after it's cooled off i assume that it'll make more not being heat soaked and then we'll double check up on cruising and this thing's dialed almost 320 horsepower on less than 20, 10 pounds of boost a plus this guy did a good job putting it together i think we could probably we probably do have some boost leaking out of this blow-off valve, and I think that might be another reason for like the little bit of wavy in the curve. Because in the car on the boost gauge, like it, it, it kind of slowly comes up to boost. I feel like this thing should spool up a little quicker than it does, but I think he'll be really happy with it. <clears throat> also, I did want to mention too that like the I was saying that my logger wasn't working with HTS or chip DCUs. And I think there might be a guy sending me a Snake EMU. Um, kind of heard hit and miss stuff about the Snake EMU stuff, but he said that he'd send it over for me to try out. And hopefully we can do some more tuning with HTS and working data logging and uh, real-time tuning so I don't have to keep burning chips back and forth. Uh, but like I said, I've, I've done a lot of chip DCU stuff, so it's a little easier for me to not live tune and just burn the chips. It's just a little bit more time consuming doing it that way. And you know, obviously can't get all of the live data that you want. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to try out something that works consistently with this HTS software for the logging and everything like that. I had some stuff that worked, but um, it just quit working for some reason. And I'm not really a tech savvy guy. Uh, I just know how to make an engine work. So. Anyways, alrighty guys, so that's going to wrap up that little Rev9 Turbo GSR Honda Civic. And uh, it ended up working out pretty good. Hopefully it lasts a long time for them. I know those turbos, the eBay, the cheaper turbos, they're kind of hit and miss. But hoping uh, the Rev9 stuff seems to be working out pretty good. So hopefully he has good success with it. And uh, he came pick the car up the other day and uh, was pretty happy with it. So uh, yeah, another one out the door hopefully some more coming soon and uh yeah a ton of other projects and stuff that i have in the works that i want to do it's just every time i like get some momentum on a project i get really busy with work and really busy with the website and really busy with emails and messages and everything like that so um i may be taking a short while off of work just so i can get these videos done that I want to do and get the uh, projects that I want to get done, done. <clears throat> so there's going to be some uh, bike content coming soon with the Groms and also some more content with my Integra, the four door I did some more filming with and yeah, just a, I have a ton of ideas and a ton of projects and stuff that I want to film and get rolling. 
So be sure to subscribe, like for more, like this video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment down below, and uh, have a great night and a better tomorrow. See you later.